Well, it did not disappoint. <laughs> the golf world's best had an insane oh, finish man. at the Farmers Insurance Open out at Torrey Pines. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Kirsten Holmes. And I'm Steve Price. The day started with a cluster of golfers all at the top of the leaderboard. They were trading big yeah. shot after big shot. In fact, 72 holes. Not enough to decide a winner here. This thing went to a playoff. Jake Giriani at Torrey Pines joins us now live with a recap of all the action. Man, what a day out there, Jake. I had my IFB cut out here, so I, uh, I think you guys threw to me there. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, you guys, as you mentioned off the top, what an amazing, amazing round of golf we had here. 72 holes, not enough. We went to a playoff. Luke List coming from way behind. He shot a six under round of 66, and then had to wait around an hour and 45 minutes just to get into this playoff. When we got in the playoff, he hit an incredible approach shot that all but sealed it. And get this, this is his first career PGA Tour win. A 37-year-old finally making it happen. On the other end, Will Zalatoris coming up a little bit short. He actually had 12 straight pars in regulation to end. He shot a one under round. After the round, here's your champion, Luke List. What did it take, mental fortitude, for this moment to be yours? I have no idea. I mean, this is what it's all about right here. This is my, my rock. And, um, she's been telling me for a long time, Daddy, I want a trophy, and I finally got her a trophy. Hopefully there's candy in it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All the kids care yeah, about exactly. are the trophies. Ryan, could you just look in the camera and say, go, Daddy, one more time? Go, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. Congratulations, Luke, the entire. Both Zalatoris and List were looking for that first career win, and it was going to come a difficult way because at, in that jam-packed field there were three players Jason Day, Justin Rose, Justin Thomas. I mean tons of these major champions, these former winners here at the Farmers Insurance Open. So it was a well-earned victory for Luke List and you got to love to see a guy getting his first win at the age of 37. Yeah, that was super cool, especially to see him share that moment with his family, but Jake, watching that tournament, seeing some of those pro golfers miss putts you know, this this much, just little short baby putts. I, I mean, it kind of makes us realize this, this game's hard. Yeah, Steve, they'll tell you there's not any pressure, but I mean, if you need any more evidence, exhibit A, right? Uh, you think about <laughs> Zalatoris on 18 with a chance to win it. I mean, there you go. And I think, you, you know, you see a guy that had more experience on the PGA Tour win it because the pressure was less to him, even though he hadn't had a victory yet. So, you know, the 25-year-old couldn't quite get the finish. I think we'll see Zalatoris get his wins down the line. But yeah, to your point, Steve, I mean, pressure is a real thing. It was an intense atmosphere around that 18th fairway. Uh, San Diego and the Tory Torrey Pines area, Farmers Insurance Open. We deliver. Jake, thank you. If you ordered your free at-home COVID test from the federal government, get ready. They are already starting to show up in mailboxes all across the county. But experts say to wait a few days after exposure before taking that test. Doctors tell CBS 8 those at-home tests work best five to six days after potential exposure. Somebody might get exposed on Monday. Well, you don't take the test on Monday to know if you caught that infection after that exposure because it takes a few days for the virus to grow inside someone for it to be detectable on those tests. So it's usually four to five days after exposure, probably closer to five to six days. Now, we are all allowed up to four free at-home COVID tests per address. Visit covidtests.gov to order yours today. COVID outbreaks are taking local transportation officials for a ride. A shortage of bus operators is forcing MTS to temporarily reduce some bus service this coming week. Going to mostly affect high frequency routes beginning tomorrow. Some routes that have a 10 minute wait time between buses, they're going to push that out. Those buses will now be 15 minutes apart and some routes that have 20 minute waits will be pushed back to 30 minutes. Also, some school related tripper services will not be operating again. This is only bus service. The trolley not affected by this. Go ahead and check with MTS for the status of your route. All right, so today was not as sunny as we would have mm. liked it to be, but it was still a good day for golf. Oh, man. Well, when you see those pictures from the East Coast, you think, oh. I am not going to complain oh. about a few clouds, yeah. a little bit of chilliness. Yeah. Sean, wow. Uh, uh, Steve and Kirsten, as the uh, tournament wrapped up, the skies were clearing over the ocean, and so folks watching it in the East Coast 
time zone. They were looking at beautiful skies along the coastline. We actually warmed up above our average, which is 67, 69 downtown San Diego. Uh, rainfall totals. Uh, God, we're really starting to feel the effects of no rain coming in. There's that 69 downtown, but 66 was a popular number from Del Mar, Carlsbad, Vista, and over to Alpine. 68 for the folks in Escondido and Ramona. 48, though, in the uh, Palomar Mountain areas, and also a 68 in the Borrego Springs area. Looking towards the west for Mount Woodson, we're talking about this upper level low continuing to move towards the east, so we'll see lots of sunshine tomorrow. Uh, and then the onshore flow will start to return, and that could give us some fog in the early morning hours of Monday and partly sunny. Santa Ana, yeah, it's the broken record. It returns by Wednesday. It'll likely be weak to moderate, and as we look at the forecast here for the next couple days, 67 tomorrow, that's right on the button. Then we cool off just a little bit as that onshore flow returns and gives us a little bit more cloud cover and the marine layer bringing in some of the fog. The same for the inland microclimates and then also cooling down in the inland areas. But by Wednesday, we're warming back up again. I'll have that forecast in just a bit. Thank you for that, Sean. Okay, so dozens of people stuck on the gondolas inside the San Diego Zoo are finally on the ground and safe. San Diego police say the Skyfari ride first stopped working just after 2 o'clock. This left more than 100 people stuck in the air for about two hours. Police say the suspects were rocking their gondola so hard it came off of track and caused the entire Skyfari to shut down. Police arrested four people for felony vandalism related to the stoppage. Everyone stuck on the trams made it out safely and thankfully no one was hurt. Gary, for those people who are stuck, San Diego County Supervisors formally approved the Home Kitchen program this week. The new law allows cooks to make a living by preparing and selling meals right from their own homes, but there are some restrictions. Home kitchens are required to have a food safety certificate, allowable food storage areas, potable water, and ongoing testing. Home kitchen operators, they can only create 60 meals for 30 people a week. The food must also be sold on the same day that it was prepared. This is a great opportunity for that mom, for that person that has always wanted to open a restaurant but doesn't have the savings, but has the great recipes. And the home kitchen ordinance set to take effect in the next 30 days. A man named John Fulton bought 65 acres of land and perched his barn and house on a hill in San Marcos back in 1893. But as time moved on, so did the Fulton family, and now that familiar barn on the hill has been taken down. The estate was getting difficult to maintain, so it was time for the property owners to sell it. It was sold to a property developer, and last week, a backhoe knocked down the barn and the towering pepper tree that had been standing for centuries. 128 years of Fulton's coming and going and loading hay uh, into that barn, and it had faithfully stood there for all those years, and then in a matter of hours, it was, it was rubble. The developer is looking to put new houses on the hill as new generations of families are hoping to enjoy that very same breeze that John Fulton liked so much back in 1893. Mm, tough to see those pictures. As San Diegans look for affordable housing options, the North County community is definitely booming right now. Today, developers Touchstone Communities unveiled the 2.6 acre Harvest Park in Valley Center. That neighborhood will have 632 homes, some of them still under construction. It's packed with amenities. We have uh, play areas for kids, an event stage, um, bocce ball, horseshoes, basketball court. Um, there's picnic shelters with barbecues. Future plans are to add two private recreation centers and 24,000 square feet of retail space at the Park Circle Common Shopping Center with more than eight miles of trails.